Hey, what's up guys and welcome back to Red Fire Reviews. Today's episode is a book review for Venom Lethal Protector by James R. Tuck. This book was published by Titan Books back in 2018 and released the same year that the film Venom starring Tom Hardy was also released. Now, I also have a review of that film over at my other channel, so that's something that you'd be interested to check out. I'll post a link at the end of this video to where you can go watch it. Now, this book serves as a novelization to the original comic of the same name that was released back in 1993 that was written by David Michelinie, Mark Bagley, and Ron Lim. I'm definitely excited to be reviewing this book today. As most of you know, Venom is a Marvel Comics character. He was originally created as a Spider-Man villain and has since gone on to be both a villain to Spider-Man and an anti-hero. But Spider-Man is my all-time favorite fictional character. I have a huge collection of Spider-Man comics. I have Spider-Man statues, Funko Pops, video games, the films. I even have Spider-Man tattooed on my arm. So needless to say, I'm a big fan of Spider-Man. <laughs> Now, before I give you guys my thoughts on the book, I'm going to do something just a tad bit different and give you guys a quick look into the character Venom. Before he became his alter ego, Eddie Brock was a journalist with a hatred towards Spider-Man, whom he blames for his damaged reputation. The source of his power is the black alien creature referred to as a symbiote, an organism that needs to bond with the host to survive. Though it's been told numerous different ways, the symbiote would first become bonded to Spider-Man. The symbiote altered his classic costume, giving it an almost all-black appearance, save for a large white spider logo. While the symbiote also enhanced his abilities, Spider-Man would eventually discover that it was also altering his mind, giving him a darker personality. Spidey discovers the symbiote's vulnerability to intense sound waves and manages to remove the symbiote, which then would become bonded to Eddie Brock. Already fueled with the hatred for both Peter Parker and Spider-Man, Brock and the symbiote became Venom, and would become more than a match for the wall crawler, and became one of his most deadliest threats, as Venom cannot be detected by Spider-Man's spider sense. The two would clash off and on, eventually leading us to the events of Venom Lethal Protector. The synopsis for this story is read from the back of the book. Eddie Brock and his alien symbiote share a common goal. They want to kill Spider-Man. After numerous attempts to squash the web spinner, however, they reach an uneasy truce with him and head west, eager to leave Trouble behind. But Trouble has different ideas. In San Francisco, Brock becomes a secret defender of the innocent. But at six feet three inches, with bulging muscles and fangs, he quickly draws attention. First from a furious Spider-Man, certain Eddie has broken his word. Then from a cadre of enemies eager to kill the lethal protector. These are the spawn of Venom, and they're out for blood. And now for my thoughts. This book was pretty fun, and very decently written. Full disclosure, I have not actually fully read all of the original comics, so I don't have much to compare it to. But just going based off the novel, I thought it was pretty enjoyable. The characterization was nicely done, and the pacing was pretty good for the most part, with the exception being I did think the middle portion of the book was just a tad bit slow. But other than that, there were no other pacing issues. I enjoyed the interactions between the other characters, especially between Venom and Spider-Man. There was an interaction between the two I thought was pretty amusing. I won't spoil much on that, but I will say it does happen near the end of the book. The only negative I can think of is that I felt like the story had a little too many subplots. Venom encounters the Life Foundation. Venom encounters a man who's out for revenge against him. Venom encounters Spider-Man. Spider-Man investigates Eddie Brock's father. Venom discovers an underground city. The list goes on. Again, I'm not sure how much this book follows the comic, as I've only read part of it, so I'm not sure how faithful the novel is to it, but it just seemed to me that a lot was happening in about 300 pages. But other than that, again, this book was fun and very enjoyable. And if you're a fan of Spider-Man or Venom, I would definitely recommend giving this one a shot. While Venom's story has been told in different ways for both page and screen, and even video games, it was pretty nice to get a read a story revolving around the classic concept. I'm going to give Venom... Lethal Protector by James R. Tuck, 4 out of 5 stars. But if you guys read this book or the original comic, what did you think of this story? Either way, let me know in the comments below and I'll be happy to check them out. And thanks so much for checking out this review, everyone. I hope that you enjoyed it. I have quite a bit of notes written for these novels of the Marvel Universe, so definitely expect some more reviews coming soon. But until then, this is Red 5, standing by.